Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we're going to continue talking about our featured work of literature for the month of August, the novel entitled "The House on Mango Street," written by Sandra Cisneros, and we're going to talk about her today. We sure are, and also some of the themes in the book, and what the author、uh, had hoped she could communicate by writing this book.、Uh, she's got an interesting background, and this book has sold millions of copies. It's been translated into over twenty different languages. It's been very, very popular. It's her best-selling novel, her best-selling piece of work. Actually, we're going to get started by reading through today's lesson. Although the house on Mango Street is neither biography nor autobiography, it is an extraordinary personal book for its author Sandra Cisneros. Like Esperanza, Cisneros grew up in the Mexican American community in Chicago. Her house was always crowded with family, but when she started college and had the chance to move into a space of her own, she seized it. In her essay called. A house of my own. Cisneros talks about her childhood dream of having a silent house. At the end of the house on Mango Street, Esperanza describes her dream house as being quiet as snow, a space for myself to go, clean as paper before the poem. This is a clear similarity between Cisneros and Esperanza. Another similarity comes in the character's family name, Cordero. Which was Cisneros' mother's family name. Cisneros started her career as a teacher and a poet, and the influence of poetry on the house on Mango Street is clear in the book's structure. Its chapters are short, some as short as two paragraphs, and they all feel like poems without rhyme schemes. The sentences are written simply and have no elevated or pretentious vocabulary. But they make the world of Chicago's Mango Street feel rich and alive. Cisneros specifically hoped to compose a book that would reward careful reading from start to finish, but that would also satisfy readers who wanted to read the book out of order. The enduring popularity of the House on Mango Street demonstrates that she succeeded in writing an accessible yet profound work. Let's go ahead and look at day three, guys. Although the house on Mango Street is neither biography nor autobiography, it is an extraordinary personal book, extraordinarily personal book for its author. Here we're talking about a classification of writing、uh, is neither biography. That's a type of writing where someone writes about a person's life. Autobiography is when that person herself or himself writes about their lives. Now, typically, you would see these as countable nouns. You would say, "Is neither a biography nor an autobiography." That would also be correct. But here, because we're talking about the general classification, you can use this、uh, grammar as well. Now, if it's extraordinarily something. It just means it's really that way to a, a large degree. So extraordinarily, remember, extraordinary just means wow, very unusual, remarkable. But here we're making it into an adverb, and it is、uh, what is it saying? It's an extraordinarily personal. So it's very, very personal to our author. Her name is Sandra Cisneros. So she's also、uh, from Mexico. She has a Mexican American background. And she writes about her feelings in this book, but it's not really an autobiography. She's basing it, though, on a lot of what she experienced growing up. So it's not a biography or an autobiography about her, but still, it's very personal to her. It's a personal book for the author Sandra Cisneros. Okay, I suppose if you're speaking Spanish, you'd say Sandra, but、uh, since we're speaking American English here, I'm going to go with Sandra here. So, like Esperanza Cisneros, grew up in the Mexican American community in Chicago.、Uh, Chicago does have a large Mexican American. 
American community.、Uh, I went to visit my brother in Chicago a couple of times just for the reason of wanting to listen to Spanish radio there. At the time, there was no internet, so I was always looking forward to going to Chicago to improve my Spanish skills. But in any case, here she grew up in the Mexican American community there in Chicago, and her house was always crowded with family. But when she started college and had the chance to move into a space of her own, she seized it. Now, of course,、uh, a lot of Mexican families are very large, and they have the extended family structure where you get a lot of people living together in the same house. So, of course, her house was always crowded with family, and、uh, well, I can't say that everybody in a Mexican family actually likes that kind of situation.、Uh, maybe some of them would like to have a space. Of their own, so they can do some writing and stuff like that. So when she had that opportunity to live on her own, she seized it. And here, seize just means to quickly grab something, to very quickly pounce on something, to take the opportunity when you have it. Yeah. Now, if you enjoy being around a lot of people and like a lot of noise and laughter and Probably some arguing too, if it's family.、Uh, you might not be bothered by this, but what if you're the kind of person who just craves silence and craves time alone? This would be a hard type of situation to grow up in. So, you can imagine we had a lot of kids in my family growing up, but there was always some place to go where it was quiet. So I feel、um, blessed for that because I do like to be alone and I love the quiet of、uh, my own place now. Yeah, and as Tom says, if you see something, you take hold of it suddenly and forcibly. If it's opportun, it's an opportunity. Then if someone's seizing an opportunity, it means they're not going to let that opportunity pass them by. They're going to grab on with both hands and see if they can use it、uh, to make their own life so、uh, even more successful. And she wanted the chance to move into a space of her own. Now she's got an essay called "A House of My Own." So she not only wrote or not only writes; she's not dead、uh, novels, but she also writes. Poems and she writes essays. Those are some of the things that she writes、uh, as as a writer, as an author. This one's called "A House of My Own," and Cisneros talks about her childhood dream of having a silent house. Yeah, that would have been a dream、uh, because there are. It's not just the Mexican families are big. They'll have their cousins come. They'll have their grandparents come, aunts and uncles, and they're all living in the same tiny house.、Uh, they love their families. I think that's a wonderful part about their culture. So she said at the end of this book, novella, the novella we've been talking about, the house on Mango Street. Esperanza, the character, the girl we've been talking about, describes her dream house. As being quiet as snow. If you, oh, a lot of our listeners don't know that falling snow is very, very quiet. Yes, there actually is a scientific explanation for why it's so quiet when it snows. It's actually quite unusual, but it is quite peaceful on snowy days. It's lovely. And of course,、uh, this also is described as a place for her to. Go to be by herself, and she also describes her dream house as being clean as paper before the poem. <laughs> That's very nice because if you're going to write a poem, of course, before you write your first word, you are facing a clean sheet of paper. So that's how she imagines her dream house to be quiet as snow, a space for herself to go, and the house is as clean as paper before one starts writing a poem. Those are her dreams, so you can see what she really longs to have and what she doesn't have growing up.、Um, this is a clear similarity between Cisneros, the author, and the character she dreamed of called Esperanza. So another similarity or something they have in common comes in the character's family name, Cordero,、uh, which was Cisneros' mother's family name. So this is her mother's maiden name. That's what we say. So yeah, she used not only some of the experiences that she'd gone through 
、uh, to compose or to write her novel, but she also used. A name that she was connected with in real life, and that was Cordero, Cordero, or Cordero. So yeah, there are a lot of similarities you can see between our author Sandra and her character Esperanza.、Uh, indeed. So again, we're saying that it's not. Uh, a biography, and it's not an autobiography, but still,、uh, it's very personal to her. And of course, I'm sure that a lot of the content of the book are based on personal experiences and things like that. Now, let's、uh, talk about her career here before we take a break. Cisneros started her career as a teacher and a poet, and the influence of poetry on the house on Mango Street is clear in the book's structure. So she was a teacher, of course. That's how she. Began her career, and she also was a poet. A poet, of course, is a person who writes poetry that can be published, and you can get paid for that. And because she was a poet, it influenced the house on Mango Street.、Uh, the influence of poetry is clear in the book's structure. So when you look at the structure of the paragraphs and stuff like that, you can tell that hey, the person who wrote this book is a poet. We're going to talk more about that and how her、uh, background and her career as a teacher and a poet really influences how she writes this book, *The House on Mango Street*. The book structure will show the story, or will, will tell the tale, will show us how her book is very similar to her own background. We're going to find out more, guys. But first, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hold on. 大家好，我是派老师。今天讲解的是八月份 Unit Fourteen, Exploring the Meaning of Home in the House on Mango Street 最后一天的课文。今天的课文介绍了 The House on Mango Street 的作者 Sandra Cisneros。第一段一开头就说明这本书并不是自传，也不是传记，但故事的主人公和作者的确有相似之处。作者在美国的墨西哥移民家庭当中长大，也希望自己有个。安静、干净的家。好，我们一起来看第一段课文的学习重点。请看第一个句子 ：Although the house on Mango Street is neither biography nor autobiography, neither nor, neither nor 就是既不是 A 也不是 B， 既不是传记也不是自传。好，接着请看到第三个句子 ：Her house was always crowded with family. But when she started college and had the chance to move into a space of her own, she seized it. 请同学把 she seized it 画起来。这个 seize 指的就是抓住。我们可以说 seize the chance， 把握机会，或者 seize the opportunity。请接着，请同学看到第五个句子。At the end of the house on Mango Street. As Veronica describes her dream house as being quiet as snow, a space for myself to go, clean as paper before the poem. 她说，她希望梦想的家呢是像雪一样安静。好，接着我们接着往下看第六个句子。This is a clear similarity between Cisneros and Esperanza. 好，我们说谁和谁的相似处。英文就是 a similarity between A and B. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue to talk about the writer of our featured novel, *The House on Mango Street*. Sandra Cisnero. Now, Cisnero again started her career as a teacher and a poet, and you can see the influence of poetry in *The House on Mango Street*. It's clear in the structure of the book. Its chapters are short, like some poems, some as short as two paragraphs, and they all feel like poems without rhyme schemes. 
So a rhyme scheme, of course, is a rhyme pattern.、Uh, rhymes, of course, are words that sound the same, like、uh, hat and cat and bat. Those words all rhyme, and of course, poems are kind of、uh, cute when they have rhymes, especially nursery rhymes for kids. It helps them memorize things, and for adults, poetry、uh, can sound、uh, pretty interesting if it does have an interesting. Rhyming scheme or rhyming pattern. There are different ways to do that. Yeah, as kids, we loved words that rhymed. It does make it easier to memorize things if they rhyme in English. So your vowel and the、uh, ending syllable will often be the same. Cat, rat, fat, sat. Those words all rhyme. And we use those to、um, memorize some songs and、uh, nursery rhymes, things like that. I know a lot of our listeners have learned English songs that rhymed.、Um, those are fun to learn too. So the sentences, those are the that we're talking about the structure, how she built her book. The sentences are written simply and have no elevated or pretentious vocabulary. Now, if you're talking about elevated or pretentious vocabulary, elevated is、uh, something that's more advanced,、uh, more gaudy. She didn't care about that. She wanted things to be simple and clear. And if something's pretentious, it's Trying to、um, impress other people, maybe you are pretending that you have more、uh, education in, than you do, or you have more money than you really do, or talent, or、uh, you know, you just kind of、uh, are false about who you really are. You're pretentious.、Uh, people don't like pretentious people. A lot of celebrities are very pretentious. If you listen to them, you think, ugh. Yuck! So yeah, she doesn't use elevated or pretentious vocabulary. She doesn't choose to use big words just to impress you or show off.、Um, but she wants to make the world of Chicago's Mango Street feel rich and alive. But how she does this is by keeping her sentences very simple, and and also kind of writing in a way that sounds like poetry, except. There's no rhyming scheme. You don't have to rhyme to write poetry. We have lots of different types of poetry. She has some beautiful sentences.、Um, just even the three、uh, examples that we've had: "Quiet as snow," "A place for myself to go." That does rhyme, but this doesn't. "Clean as paper" before the poem. So part of it rhymes, part of it doesn't. Uh, indeed. So, of course, there are different ways to write poetry,、mm -hmm. and、uh, of course, if a poem doesn't rhyme at all, it's often referred to as free verse.、Mm -hmm. But then, of course, there are other poems that rhyme, like Shakespeare's sonnets. Of course, all rhymed, and various poems from that period of time all rhymed. But modern poetry、uh, tends not to rhyme so much. It tends mostly to be free verse. But still, people play around with rhyming, and maybe they rhyme sometimes, and sometimes. They don't. You know, haikus don't rhyme, but they're very short, and they're quite popular still. Haikus. Right. So、uh, again, the point here is that the chapters are short, and sometimes they read like poems, but they don't rhyme. And again, she doesn't use pretentious vocabulary, and she makes the world of Chicago's Mango Street feel rich and alive, maybe because of that particular structure. Now, Cisneros specifically hoped to compose a book that would reward careful reading from start to finish. But that would also satisfy readers who wanted to read the book out of order. So,、uh, yes, she composed this book, hoping that people would be rewarded with their careful reading from start to finish. If they read from chapter one all the way to the end, they would be rewarded with、uh, the enjoyment of reading a wonderful story. But she also wrote it for people who wanted to read the book out of order. Maybe they wanted to read chapter seven and then three and then ten and then one. It would still work in a certain way. Yeah, so it didn't have to go、uh, chronologically. You didn't have to read from chapter one to chapter four.、Uh, you could just skip around if you want, because each of her chapters were little vignettes or little settings of a situation. So it's kind of an interesting way to write.、Um, I've never heard of a novel that did this before. So kind of cool. You can compose. 
、uh, books, writing, music. These things are all composed. So if、uh, usually if you talk about a reward, it's something you get because、uh, it's in recognition of something you've done. Maybe you returned somebody's wallet and they gave you a reward, or maybe you got straight A's in school, so your parents gave you a reward for your achievement. Here it just means that、uh, reward is feeling good about having enjoyed reading the book. So that's a nice thing to do too. I think it's interesting. I'd like. To actually get my hands on a copy,、uh, indeed, and I'm sure it could probably be downloaded pretty easily from the internet as an ebook. And if not, you could probably get a hard copy、uh, on the internet somewhere. So again, you compose a book, you write a book. You could also compose music. We、mm -hmm. use the word compose、yeah. for writing and for music. And again, if you want to read the book out of order, you will be satisfied with that. Now it goes on to say here the enduring popularity of the house on Mango Street demonstrates that she succeeded in writing an accessible yet profound work. Okay, so we're talking about the enduring popularity of this book. If something's enduring, that means it lasts a long time, and uh, that's uh, pretty. Pretty much、uh, what we're saying here, because this book was published in 1984. Do some mathematics there, and you'll know that that was、uh, almost 40 years ago. But the book is still enjoyable even 40 years later. So indeed, check this out because it has enduring popularity. It continues to be popular over the years. Yeah, and if you demonstrate something, you show that something is true, or that's. What something is like. Oftentimes, you can go to a grocery store, and they've got ladies who are demonstrating the new products that for that are on sale.、Uh, sometimes you can even、uh, eat some of the new products that they have for sale. But here,、um, this book shows us that she succeeded in writing an accessible yet profound work. It's accessible, meaning. You can understand it; it's not too difficult, and yet at the same time, it's profound. If something is profound, it's very deep and intense.、Uh, it's not just something that people throw together. She put a lot of thought behind it. So, if somebody has written something profound, it shows a lot of great knowledge or understanding of life. I love to be around people who are profound. You're usually thinking, "Oh, wow! I love that thought," and you write it down. So she demonstrates that she can write simply yet very deeply at the same time, which is great. And、uh, this book sounds to me to be a book that could be enjoyed by young people、yeah. and adults alike. True. And again, I think it's probably、uh, good for us to recommend this book to our dear listeners out there because,、uh, as it said, she doesn't get bogged down in pretentious vocabulary, and the chapters are pretty short and they read like poems. So yeah, I think this would be probably a pretty good book for you to read to improve your reading and.、Uh, Uh, listening and writing capability.、Sure. I guess either way, it could be beneficial all around. And you'll also learn about the Mexican American community in Chicago while you're at it. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 通过第二段，我们了解到 Cisneros 刚出社会的时候是一位老师，也是一位诗人。我们看第一个句子 ：Cisneros started her career as a teacher and a poet. 那我们中文其实常常会说，刚出社会的时候我在做什么？那请同学要特别注意哦，出社会千万不要说呃、uh, ，when I left the society 或 when I entered the society， 这听起来都很奇怪。同学可以学习这个句子的写法 ：Cisnero started her career as a teacher and a poet， 就是刚出社会，她其实是当老师，那她也是诗人。接下来我们看一下第二个句子。第二个句子这里说到他的书，就这本书很特别的，就是很简短。不过呢，当然不完全是诗，因为呃，虽然写起来很像诗，不过它是没有押韵的结构的 ，without rhyme schemes。接下来，请同学看到第三个句子 ：The sentences are written simply。And have no elevated or pretentious vocabulary. 
，这也是他的写作风格。他的句子都非常的简短，很简单，而且呢，用字怎么样？他没有用高深的字，没有用矫情的字 ，pretentious。或许我们可以翻成“矫情的”。好，接下来我们看到第四个句子 ：“Cisnero specifically hope to compose a book. Compose a book， 请画起来。那我们 can compose a song， 做一个做一首歌 ，compose a song。当然也可以 compose a book。他想写一本书。好，那接下来我们看后面。” But that would also satisfy readers who wanted to read the book out of order. 前面是他希望自己的书能够让有心从头看到尾的读者觉得呢，哎，这个时间花的很值得。但是呢，他也希望说有些读者可能会跳来跳去的，没有按照顺序看。They read the book out of order. 他也希望能够满足这个读者群的需求。接下来，我们看到第五个句子 ：The enduring popularity of the house on Mango Street demonstrates that she succeeded in writing an accessible yet profound work. 那我们知道这本书其实出版至今有段时间了。Enduring 指的呢是永远持久的啊。那譬如说，我们说很持很久的爱，持久的爱 ，enduring love， 或者呢。很长时间的友谊，持久的友谊 ，enduring friendship。那还有一个很相近的单字呢，就是 everlasting，e v e r l s t i n g。这几个字都非常的好，值得同学记下来。再来，我们看到 accessible， 这个 accessible 指的呢是简单的、容易了解的，那就是 easily understood 的意思。不过，其实也可以形容人的个性是和蔼可亲、平易近人的。我们举个例子 ，Unlike most celebrity, this superstar is accessible and kind. 不像其他的名人，这个超级巨星哦，非常的和蔼可亲。The superstar is accessible and kind. 以上就是我们第三天的课文讲解。谢谢大家。That's it for today, guys. That concludes our literature unit, and the book that we've been focusing on for the past three days is exploring the meaning of home in the house on Mango Street. We hope you get a chance to pick up a copy. I think you'll be really glad that you did. We hope you'll join us again for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye bye.